We've finally and formally, and it's been in the works for several months in, in discussion at the table and with OKT, the law firm of Toronto, Ottawa, a legal challenge to what the provincial government and the Attorney General of Ontario have done in terms of federally changing the criminal code Feds are a different issue, but our, our attack is against the Ontario government and the Attorney General of Ontario in their ability to what they consider conduct and manage of e-gaming. And in doing so, they require a permit by them, the Alcohol and Gaming Board of Ontario, and would take minimally 20% of the profits from a company like Mohawk Online Ganawage. Uh, we've obviously said no since the beginning. This came into place in April of this year. Uh, we've had to withdraw operations from the province of Ontario through our company, MOL, and it's obviously cost the community dollars, and it could eventually cost the community jurisdiction. Uh, our gaming commission under the gaming law has been operating since 1995. As the community, I'm sure, is aware, we in the early 2000s have hosted upwards of 75% of the world's online gaming operators through mock internet technologies. Uh, we look at it in the fact that the feds in what they've done complicitly, I'll say, in the uh, changes to the criminal code, allowing Ontario to finally find a way to shut out not only us as the Mohawks of Ganawage, but Indigenous peoples across this land from internet gaming once and for all. Uh, we can't take this lightly and we're not taking it sitting down. So yes, there is a risk to the legal challenge, but we're not assured it'll even make it to the court system at this point. It's a petition to the court identifying the fact that we view it as illegal and unconstitutional based on what I just said, the alienation of Indigenous rights to be able to conduct and manage our own model of I gaming, which we've been doing since 1999. We also have memorandums of understanding with several communities, uh, territories within the province of Ontario that are agreeable and amenable to what we've done in terms of legal challenge. They haven't joined us yet. Um, they're not a party to the case moving forward if in fact it does move forward, but we know that there's lots of support, not only in the province of Ontario, but across the country. We've spoken to other individuals and, and representatives of territories and other Indigenous groups that don't want this to happen either because we know that there are other provinces with a keen eye to what Ontario has put into place since April of this year. So, and, and it flies in the face of something that uh, the Minister of Justice, David Lametti, sent out in the spring of 2021 to not only Gunawagi, but other First Nations territories across Canada saying, we'd like to involve you and include you in a discussion about the change that we made in 1985 completely alienating indigenous populations from gaming, not only e-gaming, which didn't exist then, but all forms of gaming, land base and whatnot, uh, and then allows the criminal code to be amended to allow a province like Ontario to do its own conduct and manage model, which doesn't make sense. So we'll be, we have been and will continue to press the feds and, and David Lametti's office on that, but all of this has led us to where we are in this legal challenge because we're not getting any substantive results in terms of that dialogue. Federally, provincially, we've tried to engage with the AGCO, that's the regulatory body in the province of Ontario, and at the last minute, we chose not to because they've told us, you're barking up the wrong tree, basically. We are not the people that you should be speaking to, we just enforce the rule and the law. You need to speak to people who can change that. So that's where we're going. Uh, as we said, uh, it's a legal challenge. The court needs to either accept it or not. If the court accepts it, then obviously we're going through a legal process. If it doesn't, we're looking to, again, bundle the arrow, so to speak, with not only our partners in Ontario, as well as our partners internally through Mohawk Online, but also with the uh, help of um, senators within the federal system, uh, looking at launching our own private members bill to have a carve out for indigenous gaming, land base and online across the country and eventually look at a national Indian gaming authority similar to what happened in the United States. It's always been a target of ours probably for the past 10, 12 years or so. We tried it before, the timing wasn't right. If the timing isn't right now, it never will be. So there are alternatives in terms of what we're looking at. And like I said yesterday, we understand there's a risk in terms of taking it to a outside court system, which isn't our first 
attempt at trying to resolve this issue, but we have other alternatives for sure. It's being driven by people in Ontario and across the country with deep pockets who have a vested interest in whether it's paramutual horse racing, whether it's online gaming, whether it's land-based gaming, and the provincial governments themselves who have carved out their own niche with the support of the federal government since 1985 to create things like the Ontario Lottery and Gaming Association, who pays a dividend to all First Nations communities, as they call them within the province, and it's dwindled over the past decade or so. So it's time to take David Lametti, the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of Canada, to task because he's asked for our representation at a table to open up the doors, then don't talk about truth and reconciliation. Don't use big words you don't know what are, and it's time for us to be able to enact some of those things internally.